Yes, good evening everyone. So this is week 6 discussion for the course solar photovoltaics fundamental technology and applications <coughs> which is being taken by professor somitra from department of physics iit roorkee and i am ravi kumar a pmrf research scholar at iit bombay so let's start so in the last class we have seen like organic semi organic solar cell and before that we have seen like dssc solar cells and before that crystalline silicon and amorphous silicon or thin film solar cells so now we will see the peroxide kind of solar cells <coughs> here you can see first generation we have seen second generation thin film in the third generation we have seen this disensitized solar cell then quantum dots solar organ organic solar cell today we will see peroxide solar cells or generally known as psc yes so first thing is you need to know why we are moving from on advanced level of solar cell like from first generation to second generation second generation to third generation and many more so there are many things and few things are like that one first thing is efficiency then cost and then we have stability means how much long the device can work in the field so generally for the crystalline silicon we have 25 years so for better and better output and at cheaper price we are moving for the advanced technology so what is this peroxide material does anybody know this what is this peroxide material See, it is a compound like AMX3. A we have one cation. Then we have one metal, metallic cation, and then we have one anion. So it may be halide or oxide. So this form of compounds are known as peroxide material. and this cation can be organic or inorganic and this is the crystal structure for this peroxide type material so this a represents our metal here at x represents this halide sorry a represents our cation 
m represents our metal and x is halide so it's like first we will see what is this coordination number and all lekin but before that you need to know why we are moving to this peroxide material what are the reasons behind this does anybody know why this peroxide material is important for this solar pv application efficiency yes someone said efficiency we know that unable band gap right other than that what are the advantages of peroxide material someone said efficiency efficiency is a broader term it's broader everything comes inside this eco friendly it is not eco friendly like we are using pb lead here flexible yes it is flexible one thing is right tunable band gap just think about the characteristics which can affect the efficiency this flexibility will not affect the efficiency eco friendly nature will not affect the efficiency just think more what this tunable band gap will do what are the benefits of being a tunable band gap yes we know right second one is high absorption coefficient more yeah what does this tunable band gap do what is the like benefits of being a tunable band gap more diffusion length diffusion okay this is the another one or we can say high diffusion and see if this is a solar cell and this is the band gap and light coming on the surface of this solar cell so the light corresponding to this eg means if we say this is our light so light having band gap or energy more than or equals to eg will work here or will be used for electricity generation what about the light which light having less than energy band gap energy that will not be captured so that's why by tuning the band gap we can make sure the maximum possible of spectrum is being used utilized this is the thing for the tunable band gap okay so first tunable band gap then we have high absorption coefficient then high diffusion length these are related to efficiency and one is based on the synthesis process so first thing it does not need high temperature and it is very simple to synthesize in the laboratory or in the industry it needs some inert environment but it is not as complex as the crystalline silicon they need very high temperature so these are the things why we are moving towards this peroxide material okay let's move further so what is this peroxide solar cell what we have seen we have seen what is this peroxide material what are the advantages of this material now we will see how we are utilizing this peroxide material in a solar cell so generally what happen in a solar cell we have 
चार्ज कलेक्शन यूनिट्स दीज आर चार्ज कलेक्शन यूनिट एंड हियर वी हैव एन एक्टिव मटेरियल सो द रोल ऑफ एक्टिव मटेरियल इज जनरेशन ऑफ चार्ज कैरियर्स बाई एब्जॉर्बिंग सनलाइट सो एज वी हैव सीन इन दर्गेनिक सोलर सेल और इवन डी एस एस सी सोलर सेल देर इज वन मेटेरियल विच इज बींग यूटिलाइज एज एक्टिव मेटेरियल एंड अदर देन डेट ऑल द मेटेरियल आर बींग यूटिलाइज टू इनक्रीज द कलेक्शन ऑफ चार्ज कैरियर्स सो सेम थिंग हियर we have one active material that is the peroxide material and other than that we have other material just to just to like collect the charge carriers generated inside the peroxide material this is the like simple device structure we can see so this is like glass with conductive layer this is another material metal and this is whole transport material and inside this this brown color is peroxide material so the charge carriers with are generating inside this peroxide material and using other materials like tio2 they are being collected on the electrodes so this is the simplest device structure for this peroxide material like we have we don't have tio2 here and we have here so it, it just depend how we are collecting the charge carriers the basic principle is lie inside this peroxide material the collection the absorption of light the collect or generation of charge carriers and other than that the collection of charge carriers transporting and all are done with the help of other materials now under the device fabrication there may be many kind of many type of device structures so these are the device structure so this is our active layer so what we can do we can collect electron this side and hole this side and vice versa what we can do sorry i just wrote it wrongly hole this side and electron this side and other than that what we can do we can take electron at upper side and hole at the lower side and this material like is being meso structured means to just increase the efficiency of charge collection so the interface between this peroxide material and charge collecting material can be changed or it can be a planar or it can be a meso structure so here it is meso structure and here it is plane what is the benefit of being a meso structure it is just about the efficiency of charge collection same thing here but we don't have a meso structure here it is only a planar structure so only one thing is common that is peroxide material other than that we can get electron here hole here or hole is this side and electron this side that depends how we are using other materials okay let's move further okay just tell me what do you think about the efficiency of peroxide material as compared to silicon or crystalline silicon technology is it high low or comparable just write in the chat box i am seeing you this your messages it is comparable 
okay like have you googled it what is the maximum efficiency of the peroxide material have been reported okay just google it right now let's let me know the number 20 and 26 it is all about the past what is the new efficiency report Fifteen. I am saying 26 is the past, then it should be more or less. Thirty-three. Even last week also here at IIT Bombay, the like one of the article was that we measures the highest efficiency that is more than twenty-six percent in IIT Bombay itself for this peroxide material. Yes, it is thirty-three. So we can say the efficiency of this peroxide material is more than the silicon solar cell. Also, we have tunable band gap here. So we can increase this number even further. Okay, now let's come to the cost. What do you think the fabrication cost of peroxide solar cell? as compared to silicon solar cell comparable more or less lesser how much lesser means 20 percent 30 percent 60 percent one third okay okay now last question is all about the li lifetime what do you think about the lifetime of peroxide material have these days? <laughs> low, low, I am saying, okay. I am just giving you a number. For the silicon or crystalline silicon, we have 25 years lifetime. So what, so what is the number for peroxide material? One year yes yes so the cost is low for this peroxide material efficiency is good as compared to silicon if we just see these two things then peroxide materials are good as compared to crystalline silicon but the lifetime is very less so they are not economical as if as of now i don't know about the future and for a technology to be in competitive in the market there are three things which need to be checked one is cost efficiency and lifetime if these three are three things are good for a technology then it will be commercialized that's why the peroxide technology is yet to commercialize okay so what do you think why the lifetime of these peroxide material is low Thermal decay, yes. Degradation.
yes stability yes so these are the challenges we need to improve efficiency it is not stable in the air and under the high temperature we are using pb that is lead which is toxic in nature so these are the future challenges on which on these topic research are being conducted okay so i think we have seen the peroxide material then solar cell then their advantages disadvantages and the future challenges now we will start with the questions so first question says the operation mechanism of a peroxide solar cell can be described in the following steps and these are the options the operation mechanism first thing what should happen Mamta saying A and Vinod saying C. Other? What about others? Do the do they have any opinion? Or they are giving on proverb? I'm just kidding. Yeah. Deepsika saying A. Okay. Yes, we know. Just see first charge migration, then dissociation. It is not making sense here. We will see like first there will be exciton generation, then these ex exciton will be dissociated. Even they will dissociate at room temperature as compared to organic solar cell. They will dissociate at room temperature only and then charge will migrate and those migrated charge will be collected so yes a is the correct answer correct answer is a let's move to the next question which says unsaturated condition of a solution is and these are the options C is the concentration and C is the critical concentration. We know saying B. Dipsika said C. Okay. Deepshika, we know what about Mamta? Okay, see here you can see. For the saturated concentration should be equal for the super saturated it will be more than the critical concentration and for the unsaturated it will be less than the critical concentration so yes b is the answer who is who saying b we know b is the correct answer let's move to the next question which says the tolerance factor for the cubic peroxide structure and 2D layer structure is respective and these are the options tolerance factor means distortion in the cubic structure It is asking for two things. First is cubic peroxide structure 
and second thing is the 2D layer structure. If you don't know, let's guess. A, B, C or D. I'm waiting for your answer. cubic structure okay now give me the answer answer is in front of you am i audible is there any issue with my internet connection If I am if I am audible, just write in the chat box yes no. Because I am not sure if there is some internet issue. Audible, sir. Okay, thank you. Deepshika said C. Yes, she is the answer here. Just remember this formula, we will be using this. Next question says, the morphology and surface roughness of the peroxide films can be measured by respectively. And these are the options. C, deep C casting C, okay. Mamta is also saying C. Vinod saying B. Vinod, what is the full form of NMR? It is nuclear magnetic resonance and it is used for what purpose? For to check the purity or content. So it cannot be used for the surface roughness. See FTIR is an spectroscopy which is like Fourier transform infrared resonance or spectroscopy. It is used to just find out the which material is present and in what quantity. What quantity means percentage. If you have seen this Chandrayaan 3 recent tweet from the ISRO, so they have just posted a graph that is nothing else, just the kind of spectroscopy. And they said, like, uh, which material was sulfur? Sulfur is there. Yeah. So uh, yes, C is the correct answer. SEM is the scanning electron microscopy, and AFM is the atomic force microscopy, and they are being used for the morphology and surface roughness. So answer here is C.
okay let's move to the next question which says the tolerance factor in abx3 peroxide is defined as very simple question these are the option here ra rb is the radius of a and b that is cation and metal and rx is the radius of anion which among these is represent the tolerance factor mamta said a okay vinod a deepsika a so i am also saying a yes a is the correct answer here A is the correct answer yes degree of distortion it is being used for the degree of distortion someone asked in the like last class as well i think dipsika asked this so this option is a next we have a small numerical and you need to solve it right away it says in abx3 peroxides a is given 253 pm 180 pm it is b radius of b and x is 220 pm what is the value of tolerance factor and these are the options when i see mamta saying c okay let me show you some others please check if answer is c chandan saying c 0.83 okay yes i also got the same 0.83 if you don't know the formula this is the formula just put the values and calculate c is the answer here if anybody having any difficulty just let me know okay i think they, you don't have any difficulty here so just put it like r a 253 plus r x 220 divided by root 2 into 220 r x plus 180 and you will solve it will come around 0.83 Okay, let's move to the next question, which says this the spiro O emitted is used in peroxide solar cell edge, and these are the options. You just need to tell me this material is used for what purpose. C. Mamta, you are saying for this question or the last question? We know you are right. B. C cannot be the answer here because for the absorbing thing we are using peroxide for light absorption and then for charge generation. That is the active layer. I just told you 
we have an active layer and other than that all other materials are just to collect the charge carriers and to transport the electron and hole yes we know you are right it is b hole transport layer B is the answer here. Let's move to the next question which says PD or TPSS is used as and these are the options. A, B, C, D. I just told you it cannot be C and it cannot be none of the above as well. Deep Sika saying if earlier was hole transport, then it should be electron transport. Vinod also saying B. We use this P E D O T in I think organic as well. Nobody saying A. It is A. Whole transport player. And, and answer here is A. I understood why, why you said B. Because earlier was whole transport. Then it should be electron transport. But that is not the case here. Okay, no problem. Let's move to the next question, which says, what is the coordination number of A cation in ABX3 peroxide structure? And these are the answers, options. Twelve. Mamta saying twelve. Only one answer here. Okay, this is a structure. Deepsika also saying, well, what is A? A is this structure. And Chandan saying A, okay. And what is the coordination number? What is the definition of coordination number? Coordination. How many bonds will be coordinated with the atom? In simple form, we can say this. So, let's say number of atoms to be bonded. Yes. Let's say this is our a and we have one square here and another will be here so like this number of atoms to be bonded See, if this atom is at this corner, so there will be four different cube associated with this. One, two, three and four. And in one cube, there is three bond. Into four, it will be twelve. And even it's like coordination number is 12 for A. So answer here will be C. So Deepsika is right and 
ममता इजराइल ओके नेक्स्ट इज ए नोमेरिकल विच यू नीड टू सोल्व राइट अवे इट से a peroxide solar cell has the following parameters voc 0.8 volt isc 35 milliampere per centimeter square fill factor 76 what will be its efficiency and these are the options You don't need any formula particular for this question. The knowledge you acquired in the last classes will be used here. Even from the third or fourth classes. We know what saying C. Deepsika saying B. So both of you have calculated this or just saying for the sake it's peroxide then it should be higher. Dipsika you calculated it okay. You calculated or just like saying for the sake that this is peroxide. Calculated okay. How you calculated just write the formula. We know the not calculated. So we know if you haven't calculated, so your answer is wrong. Just calculated. Dipsika, you just put the formula. Now Dipsika saying A. Before that, she was saying C. Okay. Fine. So she is saying A. Fill factor into ISC into VOC. This is not the correct formula. What is the unit of this formula? the unit coming for this formula and will be divided by 1000 will be divided by 1000 and C. The formula for efficiency is fill factor into ISC into yes that is the P max right into VOC divided by insulation into area. Simply we can say P maximum output P incident input. This is the P max, yes. But you need to calculate efficiency. Now use this formula and try to calculate. Now 
there is a catch here Rishika, you might be like having answer A by chance, but just calculate it once again and check the units. The efficiency should be unitless. If it is in percentage, then need to multiply with 100. We know if you are calculating, just let me know the answer. If not, then let me know. Answer coming A. Okay. Unit matching. You are getting like yes yes okay okay <clears throat> see the catch is here it's like we have fill factor 76 percentage we can write 0.76 into our isc 35 milli ampere per centimeter square into voc is 0.8 volt see current is depending on the surface area but voltage is not. So even our solar cell is that much large or just a part of the solar cell, our voltage will remain same. So that's why voltage is not given at per centimeter square or something else. Then we will divide and for the standard test condition, we take 1000 watt per meter square and n into area. Let us assume the area is 1 centimeter square, then it will be 0 0.76 into 35 into 0.8 milliwatt. And the insulation on per centimeter square is 100 milli then milliwatt milliwatt will be will got cancelled and if we are calculating in percentage right 100 100 will be cancelled then just multiply 0 0.76 into 35 into 0 0.8 0 0.76 into 35 into it is coming 21.28 accurately so this will be the efficiency i hope you got this The current depends on the surface area, voltage does not. One thing is here. And if current is given in per centimeter square, step 3. This is 1, this is 2, this is 3. So in the step 3, what we are doing, we are just making this about thing p max into milliwatt we are taking cell area equals to 1 centimeter square let us assume our solar cell is of 1 centimeter square then you will just multiply it 1 centimeter square so centimeter square will be cancelled out and it will be in milliwatt and then find out the insulation means light incident on the surface of solar cell 
having surface area of 1 cm square so generally we have 1000 watt per meter square and if you will convert it in centimeter square it will come around 100 milliwatt per centimeter square and here also we will assume 1 centimeter square then multiply by 1 centimeter square it will be 100 milliwatt so 100 milliwatt will be the input energy and after calculating this it will be the output energy sorry power it will be output power and that will be incident power we know the, is it clear okay thank you anybody having difficulty in this numerical yes no i guess no okay okay chindan thank you so that's it for today is the answer here and we are done with today's class next class we will see the peroxide in more detail and then that will be the second last class and in the last class we will see some tech like analysis technology or techniques we have is it fine you are welcome thank you everyone
so this is a video about the fabrication of peroxide material let's see in this video we are going to fabricate perovskite solar cells a solar cell is a device that converts sunlight into electricity the cost of fabricating one cell is less than 50 cents it only takes a few hours and we use standard laboratory equipment this experiment is highly appropriate for general chemistry students to learn about this state-of-the-art renewable energy technology. The perovskite layer absorbs light and creates electrons in the conduction band and holes in the valence band. On one side, titania selectively transfers electrons from perovskite to the FTO anode. On the other side, copper thiocyanate selectively transfers holes through the carbon particles to the FTO cathode. Once we have electrons on the anode and holes on the cathode, we can hook it up to power an external device like an LED. First, we are going to use a model to demonstrate the fabrication of the solar cell. We start by placing an FTO glass with the conductive side facing up. Next, we deposit a layer of titania covering three-fourths of the surface. Then we coat the surface with perovskite light absorbing material followed by a layer of copper thiocyanate. To complete the device, we sprinkle carbon particles on layer and close it with another piece of FTO glass with conductive side facing down. We use binder clips to hold the device together. To make a perovskite solar cell, we need two pieces of FTO glass, titania, Perovskite, copper thiocyanate solutions, and carbon powder. To prepare the titanium solution, we use 5 ml of ethanol, 0.3 ml of titanium isopropoxide, and 0.1 ml of hydrochloric acid. After adding the three together, we let the solution stir at room temperature for about 10 minutes. The second solution we have to prepare is the lyse absorbing material Berosky. To make a boy fine molar Berosky solution, we will need to mix 140 mg of lead chloride and 240 mg of methyl ammonium iodide in one mil of dimethylformamide solvent. The resulting reaction is to be stirred at 80 Celsius until a homogeneous yellow and transparent solution is formed. Lastly, we will make polyurophile molar copper thiocyanate solution by stirring 6 mg of copper thiocyanate powder in one milliliter of dipropyl sulfide solvent at room temperature overnight. The final solution should look colorless and transparent. In the first step, we will determine the conductive side of FTO glass. To determine the conductive side, we set the multimeter to resistance mode, plug the two leads into the multimeter, and measure the sheet resistance on each side using the probes. The uncoated side will not give any value. To deposit the titania layer, place the FTO glass on the bench top with the conductive side facing up. We deposit one drop of titania solution onto the glass and spread it across the surface with a glass pipette. Then we remove the tape entirely. and place the glass piece on a hot plate facing up. We heat it at 450 degrees Celsius for about 20 minutes and let it cool down for about 10 minutes. We put one drop of perovskite solution and spread it across the surface with a pipette. We roll the pipette over the glass several times to create a uniform smooth film. We keep the uncoated surface covered and remove the excess tape. We place the glass piece on a hot plate 
be heated to about 110 degrees Celsius. We wait until the film turns completely black and let it sit there for another 10 minutes. We deposit one drop of copper thiocyanate solution and quickly spread it across the surface with a glass pipette. Now place the glass piece on the bench top, scoop a small amount of carbon particles with a spatula and sprinkle them onto the glass piece. Finally, we close the device with another piece of FTO glass with the conductive side facing down and we hold the device together using binder clips. We measure voltage by turning the multimeter knob to the 2 volt mark. We measure current by turning the knob to 1 milliampere mark. Using a very similar procedure, we make high efficiency cells in our research lab. Here we created a small solar panel that can light an LED. So that's just for today. We will see you in the next class.